You know, I didn't think Star Wars could get any dumber. And then I saw the trailer for The Last Jedi. The first thing I want to say, and I'm stifling the screams of anger, is what the fuck? Seriously, this movie looks like it's Empire Strikes Back Redux. So, if you're an idiot and you couldn't see the similarities between A New Hope and uh, The Force Awakens, well, then you're not going to see the fucking similarities between this and The Empire Strikes Back. Why? Because nostalgia and you're a fuck. So, that aside, let's talk about this really disappointing and stupid trailer. Now, the first thing I want to mention is this movie, instead of snow walkers and snow speeders, we have walkers and sand speeders. Wow. So, basically, what this new Star Wars trilogy is that you're all so excited to see because you've been fans for such a long time, and it has nothing to do with the fact that it's just popular and you want to be relevant socially, of course, is the fact that they're just taking the old film and taking out one element and replacing it with a different element and saying it's all brand new. So, like I said, we had the snow speeders and the at at walkers in The Empire Strikes Back. Now we have walkers and these speeder things in the sand. How original, right? Perfect. Exactly what it needs. Ripping off The Empire Strikes Back because it's considered the best one. Next, we got Luke Skywalker and his narrations of Breathe, Breathe. So essentially, Luke Skywalker is now Yoda. Okay, I could understand that. That doesn't really piss me off. That seems like a logical progression of the character. But this chick is now on a desolate island training to be a Jedi, just like Luke in The Empire Strikes Back. And before I get into this trailer more, I just want to say, you can shit on George Lucas all you want. He deserves it. The special edition changes, most of them are bullshit. The prequels, they're bullshit. But goddammit, he did not tell you the same story three fucking times each movie. This is what you're getting with this. Disney does not equal originality and fun. Disney equals same old shit, just repackaged even shittier. It's sad and embarrassing that a fucking nearly 40-year-old film in The Empire Strikes Back is going to top this shit. How do I know? Because I've seen the movie, I know how great it is, and you know what? It's not a rip-off of the first movie. It's not a rip-off of anything else. It's wholly its own property, unlike The Last Jedi. All you're going to get is the same old shit. And now you're probably asking yourself, why aren't you excited to see the same stuff? Because you know why? I've had it my whole life, and I love it, and I will watch that if I want to see that. If I want to experience those types of emotions, I'm just going to watch that movie. This movie is not exciting. It's angering. You know, there was a point in my life... You know, we'll use this example. Marvel trailers. When they drop a new Marvel trailer, I'm excited. Why? Because they have made great films for the last decade, almost. Star Wars... In my lifetime, there hasn't been a truly great Star Wars movie. I like Rogue One. I bought it on Blu-ray. I like it a lot less than I did in theaters. Why? Because I was, you know, I was on this negative kick of Episode 7 sucking dick, and it still sucks. And I thought, wow, Rogue One was so much better. But when I watch it, it's, it's better. But it's not, you know, the third best Star Wars movie that I thought it was at one point. No. It's, I guess, the fourth? Maybe the fifth? I don't know. Do I want to be generous to Revenge of the Sith? That's not really important. What's important, though, is that Marvel consistently brings out a new movie each year, and I'm excited, because the last one was great. I'll give Marvel this. Marvel films range from good to great. The good is stuff like the first Captain America, and Iron Man 2's just passably good. Then you got great, like the Avengers, Winter Soldier, Civil War, Ant-Man, Doctor Strange, all those things. Those are great. Those are a fun time. I miss having that kind of excitement and those towards the feeling, kind of feelings towards Star Wars. And it's not that I got old, it's not that I became cynical or jaded, it's just the fact that Star Wars got lazy, and people got dumber. And now, if you're one of the people that's excited and you're offended that I'm calling you dumb, you should be. Because, if you're a real Star Wars fan, you're going to understand the similarities and the stupidity between these new ones and the classics. And if you can't, then this isn't the video for you, and the, these movies are for you. They are targeted towards idiots that have never sat down and watched an old movie because it's old, because it's irrelevant to them. Oh, it doesn't have this and that. Let me tell you something. Pick a movie you fucking like. It's probably something stupid like The Hunger Games. Now, hold that up to Star Wars. In 50 years, people will still be... To, well... People will still talk about Star Wars in 50 years. Now, I don't like the Disney ones, but... Most people are dumb, and most people do, so it'll stick around. My point is, though, Star Wars is forever. Hunger Games is a fleeting little thing. But it's the original Star Wars that's the big one. Everyone loves to talk about this and that, but it's the original one that changed the world. It changed the way movies are made, the way they're marketed. It changed the action figure scale. It changed all kinds of things. That's the big one. And that's why it's stuck around, because it's so great and it's so relevant. 
but I just don't know why they don't remarket it like they did in the 90s, you know? I am I was born at the end of the 80s, I grew up as a small kid in the 90s, and they re-released Star Wars. They made a few cosmetic changes, and I fell in love with that Star Wars. Original, special edition, it's still relatively the same movie. My point is, instead of remaking these movies, they need to just resell you those and make something new and crazy and possibly even better. It's, it's possible to make better movies, but they're too lazy and they're too dependent upon... Here's what they're dependent upon. The old guys whose lives are kind of shitty and they look back and think of Star Wars as the greatest time in their lives. So they're on this nostalgic kick and they have the spending money. So they're going to take their fucking kids and their wives that don't really want to go and all this other unfulfilling shit in their lives is going to be replaced by this new Star Wars product. And they're going to love it no matter what. Even if it's shitty, even in their heart, if they know that it's bad, they're going to be praising it and very thankful that it exists. So they got that those people. Then they got the people that aren't even into Star Wars. They're just going to do the next popular thing because it's the next popular thing. Those are your, That's your big audience, but that's the worst audience because if you notice nowadays, we don't have anything that sticks around. We don't have anything that's relevant for a long period of time. No, it's... Everything that comes out is based off something that came out in the past when people were better. The dependence on technology and certain things like that has made the attention span so short because if you don't like something, there's literally a million other options at the click of your fucking finger. So that helps and hurts a lot of things. It helps that the spread of information is readily available. I mean, if I need to know something, I can just look it up and it's right there in the palm of my hand. But at the same time, you don't appreciate anything or respect anything. Everything is... Here, the, uh, here one minute, gone the next, it doesn't matter, there's something else to replace it. I think if you're of a certain age, like towards the end of your 20s and up, you remember a time period where you stuck with something, and you learned to appreciate it and respect it and to love it. And I don't think we're ever going to have anything like that. As technology moves quicker and quicker, we're going to have less and less respect for whatever comes. So, that all comes back around full circle to this new Star Wars trailer, which I will now discuss in greater detail. So the trailer starts with Rey on the rocky, not Dagobah planet. There's a voiceover of Luke saying, breathe, breathe, and all that other shit. Which, like I said earlier, I'm, I'm happy that Luke's doing what Luke is doing. It makes sense. It's logical. Now, I am worried that this whole movie is going to be about her. She's not interesting. Like, if you want to hear what I think about Rey, listen to my episode 7 review. She is probably the worst Star Wars character up there with Jar Jar Binks, and that's not hyperbole. Really look at her. Don't look at how cool you think she is. Actually look at what she does and how she achieves those things. She doesn't actually achieve anything. It's all just given to her by writing conveniences and plot contrivances. Back to the trailer. We see Princess Leia, you know, R.I.P. Carrie Fisher you know, cocaine, whatever. We see Kylo Ren's mask. I guess he's going to stop being a cuck. Because here's one thing that a lot of people... Here, okay, remember when I was talking about that audience, the general audience that doesn't really care about Star Wars that are just going to go see because it's popular? i got to give some people in my family credit. Because my cousin, the one thing she says to me, she's like 20 years old, she goes, I saw that Star Wars movie, I didn't like it. Because the bad guy was bitch-made. Now, I don't really, you know know what that means so i looked it up but my point is she thought he was a bitch a cuck a weak guy so if your villain is not imposing in any way whatsoever why are you going to get invested in your hero to defeat the villain you're not see if you go back and watch episode seven she conquered the villain she did everything she got the millennium falcon this bitch has every fucking thing handed to her and it's anticlimactic and stupid and poorly written and it's really lame like the other day i had a discussion with somebody who said oh ray is the ultimate star wars fangirl well that's the fucking problem your characters should not be fans of what they're in all right you should be fans of the characters it doesn't need to be self-referential it's getting to a point where it's like hey remember this we're in that thing haha ha, don't you love it laugh everybody enjoy it it's bullshit it is without a doubt the biggest pile of shit and entertainment right now okay and it angers me that we live in a world where this is so, like, not even readily accepted, just excitedly accepted. People are like, give me more. Why? Why do you want bad stuff? Why can't you have anything of quality made anymore? I mean, you get certain things that are fun. You get your empty action movies. You get your cool action movies, like a John Wick 2. That's a lot of fun. But then you get the dumb shit, which I happen to love, of the Fast and Furious. There's nothing real deep there. There was a time where you could watch a blockbuster film and it made you think about life, religion, age, roles in society. Those all come from one movie, Indiana Jones. If you watch an Indiana Jones film, all that shit is embedded in that fucking two-hour epic extravaganza of fun and action. 
you have a great character, great villain. You want to see Indy overtake Belloc and the Nazis and get the Ark. The, the thing is, these great movies aren't too far away, like or weren't so far ago. You know, uh, 1989. I know some teenagers are like, oh, the 80s were forever ago. Eh, 1989. You know, I was six weeks old or some shit in that year. My point is, it wasn't that far away, and it's sad that they can't go back and just make something of that quality. You know, there's a reason we watch classic movies all the fucking time. There's a reason they market classic movies all the time, because they're the good ones. And now, everyone's trying to make the next quick buck, and there's no quality. I'm sorry I ranted. I'm back to the trailer. So we see Ray looking at the light star thingamabobber. She's on the side of the mountain training with a lightsaber, and people are freaking out because, oh my god, lightsabers are so cool. So this movie comes out at Christmas. Yip you do. Now here's the part, the offending part that pisses me off. Sand speeders versus walkers. Like, people are like, oh, well, why are you upset? It looks so cool. Okay, it looks fine. It's a CGI character or machine on a screen. Yeah, that's nice. Where's the originality? Originality. Originality is not even a word. My point is, when you watch the original Star Wars movie, there's a big space battle at the end. In the next one, there's a fucking land battle in the beginning. That's different. Then you get to Return of the Jedi, and it's kind of like, I've been here before. They even recycle a lot of the same music. Of course, it's rescored, but my point is, Return of the Jedi is a lot like Episode Four, but they bring in other elements. They bring in the speeder bike chase. They bring in the Sarlacc pit battle. You finally see Luke grow as a character and become a Jedi Knight. Even Han's like, a Jedi Knight? You know, while I'm under, everyone's got delusions of grandeur and all this shit. Where's Rey's delusions of grandeur moment from a Han Solo-esque character? There is none. There is none. It's like, oh, at the end of the movie, I fought with a lightsaber, the weapon I've never touched, and I beat the bad guy. And I only got away because the planet cracked in half, and don't give me that excuse about Chewbacca shooting the guy either. That's some horse shit. When he was fighting Finn, there was no problem with him holding his own. Who was Finn was a trained fighter, but Rey was a scavenger on a planet, and she had to fend for herself. Not the fucking same, alright? You know, MacGyver couldn't, you know, make anything out of a toothpick and a piece of bubblegum. But if you put him up against Rambo, Rambo's gonna push his shit in because Rambo is a trained killer and survivalist. So, those skills aren't skills that Rey has against Kylo Ren. Like Luke, if Luke would've fought Darth Vader on the Death Star, Luke would've been killed instantly. Why? Because George Lucas is a better writer than people give him credit for, and Darth Vader is an, is an imposing villain. He's not some bitch made, according to my 20-year-old cousin, character who whines and postures and complains. It's funny. Kylo Ren is basically a mirror image of you, the people that love Episode Seven. You bitch and you whine and you get on the internet, and if you don't get your way, you throw a tantrum and you throw your phones and you do all this dumb shit, and you don't handle things responsibly like an adult. And you get villains like that. And the funny thing is you get behind those characters and think they're evil, but at the same time you need to look in the mirror because you are that villain. You are the evil one. You're not, you know, the good, virtuous Luke Skywalker character. And the funny thing is, no one's the virtuous Rey because no one's that fucking perfect, all right? She needs to lose a body part in this movie. She needs to be beaten, destroyed. Something needs to happen to her to bring her down a peg. All right? If she continues on this trajectory where she's untouchable, you're going to have a problem. Because one thing I do like about you, the listener, people, time makes you rational. You get so excited over the newest thing. But over time, you begin to realize that, you know, it was the hype of the moment. It was great. You know, she wasn't as hot as I thought she was, but I still slept with her. That kind of stuff. You go through these moments in life where you don't think you just do. But then through, you know, the looking glass of time, you realize, you know, that wasn't the right thing to do. I shouldn't have slept with her. I shouldn't have done said thing, you know? And I think, hopefully, I'm being hopeful now, that throughout time, you will realize that these movies are cheaply... I'm not even going to say cheaply, excuse me, because there's a lot of money involved. They're poorly made films to get your dollars as quick as possible, and they have no relevancy outside of their six-month window in the theaters. Star Wars, maybe it came out in 77 when the home video market was non-existent, but God damn it, it was released so many fucking times and people went to see it back to back to back, and it resonated. Movies today are disposable. Some of the Marvel ones are not as disposable, like the first Avengers is a landmark moment. Um, I guess even Avatar, which is the highest grossing movie of all time, is disposable. It's not, you know, good. It was flashy 3D technology, and you went and you bought into that. 
But Star Wars, what I'm trying to say is, if anything at all, is I'm hoping that through the lens of time, you people will understand that these movies aren't as good as you think. Stop feeling and using some logic instead, and you will understand that, mm, you know, this guy on the internet that I'm going to thumbs down his video and call a bitch actually wasn't wrong the whole time. That was probably my last aside. We're going to talk about the trailer for a few more moments, and then I'm going to close this video out. So Finn is in some kind of stasis chamber. I What I'm taking away from this trailer is it takes place right after Episode Seven, which is weird for a Star Wars movie. You know, mostly sequels take place over a, or after a certain period of time. For example, I think Empire and Jedi is one year apart, or A New Hope and Empire is three years apart, so there's all kinds of great things that happen between the movies. But this looks kind of like the next day, because whatever. Uh, Halloween was the perfect example of how to do this right, where it takes place literally seconds after the original film ends and it's a continuation. There's only one problem. Halloween was a fantastic film, Episode 7 wasn't, and I don't want a continuation of that. If anything, I want an apology. I would like a fucking five-minute scene of Mickey Mouse coming out with a lightsaber and Jedi robe and going, Oh, I'm so sorry, the movie sucked ass! And this is what we're going to do to make it better. But that ain't happening. Anyway, Poe Dameron and BB-8 are back, because, you know, you need to sell fucking toys. So, hey, BB-8. I didn't really like Poe Dameron, by the way. I thought he was kind of weak. Kind of lame, too. He just disappears. How does he survive that crash? Um... And the part that pisses me off is when he meets Finn. He's like, hey, you're not whatever, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to give you a name. We're good friends. Do I talk first? Do you talk first? When he meets Kylo Ren. No, because if the characters in the film aren't taking the villain seriously, how's the audience? Oh, God, he looks cool. He's got a cross guard lightsaber. This is badass, blah, 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 blah. No. Okay, the only badass Star Wars villain, realistically, was Darth Vader. And I guess the Emperor. The Emperor is slicker than he is, you know, evil. But we'll get into that at another time, because... I feel like the Star Wars shit's going to keep going on for a long time, and i got a lot of shit to say. But Poe Dameron's here, yippity-doo, their, uh, their hangar gets destroyed, we get to see a light, uh, a big light show of explosions when an X-Wing, which doesn't even look like a good X-Wing, blows up. Uh, the Millennium Falcon's going to fly in, so you know it's going to be fucking Rey, because she's a great pilot on top of a great cook and a lightsaber wielder, and she knows how to do everything. She can fucking fix world peace and all this other shit. And the Migrant Crisis. Okay, so we see Ray training some more. We see Kylo Ren. Ah, it's too little too late with this motherfucker. He's a cunt. Uh, R2-D2 and Luke. It looks like a flashback scene with a destroyed Jedi village, temple, kids. I don't care. Luke Skywalker ran away. That's a problem. All the men in Star Wars are now bitches. Because Star Wars is now a female property. Which, if it was done right, it would be a 50-50 thing. Kind of like it was back in the day. Princess Leia was a great character. Ray is not. Jyn Erso was okay. Padme was a really interesting character. Not Ray. Yay, Captain Phasma's back because toys. We see what looks like the fucking uh, Jedi, Return of the Jedi Rebel Frigates. They're also in Empire Strikes Back, so don't need to correct me. I know. Those are back. Yay. Um, looks like older X-Wing style. Maybe not. I don't know. And then Luke's like, we need to end the Jedi cryptic message that people are gonna fucking go on about for months and months and months. What does it mean? What does it mean, guys? Let's get into the discussion online. You're gonna get all these fucking idiots going, it means so much. No, it's probably a throwaway line because if you watch old trailers for other movies, they're just like blah blah blah, and it's just a throwaway line, and you guys have spent hours of your life investing uh, time and resources as well into deciphering what a throwaway line actually means in a trailer. So that is the Star Wars The Last Jedi trailer, also known as Star Wars Episode Eight. What did I think? Well, if you can't tell by the last fucking 20 minutes of me going on and on, I didn't think it was that great. One positive I can take away from it, the music was cool, but I'm kind of tired of them using a variation of the Force theme constantly. It's Everything about this movie is repackaged shit. Let me give you another example for Star Wars, okay? You claim to like Star Wars, maybe you bought a couple action figures from the last movie, but whatever, you really don't know much. There is a figure that came out in 1999. It's called the Comtech Chip Han Solo. It's a good toy. It was great for 1999. Came out in 99, then they released it in 02, and then 04, and then 05, and 06, and so on and so on. And it was the same fucking toy, even to a point where they sculpted a new head and painted his pants a different color just to keep recycling the same fucking product. That's what this is. The same fucking product, slightly repackaged. They take shit from the old one and they put it in here, and that's what you're going to get with The Last Jedi. It's The Empire Strikes Back with a little bit of Return of the Jedi, aesthetically speaking, of course. You're going to get 
Ray training, aka Luke training on Dagobah. By the way, Luke training on Dagobah, the only criticism I really have of that film, The Empire Strikes Back, is how long was he on the planet? And how long were Han and Leia and Chewie and C-3PO on the run from the Empire? Doesn't really matter in the long scheme of things, but that's the one complaint I have. I haven't even seen this movie and I got dozens of complaints. And you might say that's unfair. But the thing is, it's a continuation of what I've already seen. And it's not going to be that different, because you're going to say, Well, J.J. Abrams is not directing this film. He's the reason it was this way. No, the Disney overlords are the problem, okay? I don't care if I directed it, your mom directed it, fucking George Lucas himself came out of retirement to direct it. Whatever Disney says is going to go. So these movies are all going to feel the same. They're not going to have a different voice. They're not going to feel connected but different. They're all going to feel like you never left the fucking theater for nine hours. It's boom, boom, boom. All bullshit. Okay? You're going to get the same cookie cutter material you're gonna get the same fucking dumb performances bad performances by the way i'm so tired of people saying oh uh episode seven had great performances from who even harrison ford who i consider one of the greatest actors ever his ass seemed disinterested so you weren't getting anything good out of him mark hamill did not have a performance he stood there so don't give him credit princess leia looked like a fucking plastic doll she looked as fake as the cgi model in rogue one sorry carrie fisher fans i like her i liked her she was great i have nothing but praise for her in the old movies but she lived a rough life and it showed in that fucking movie she was just barely there she was as fucking robotic as c-3po c-3po best performance of that fucking movie all right only laugh I got out of that whole fucking movie. Not the forced bullshit, not the stupid Maz Kanata, a.k.a. Yoda crap, not the same cantina scene, not the same fucking Death Star, none of that bullshit. How is the fucking Empire back, a.k.a. the fucking Resistance, or whatever they are, the New Order, excuse me, the New World Order, it's all bullshit to me. It sucks, it's garbage. Why does it exist, and why do you people accept it so readily? Why are you excited about this shit? Because it makes you feel like when you were a little kid again? Grow the fuck up. 